boys and girls. I'm Nora's mother, Mrs. Mara, and today I'm going to read to you a story called Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. Robert McCloskey was my favorite author when I was in kindergarten. Some of his other books are One Morning in Maine and Blueberries for Sal. So if you like the book today, you can try to read those too. But for now, we're going to start with Make Way for Ducklings. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live, but every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles, so they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night quacked Mr. Mallard, so down they flopped. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast and in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer, but the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the Mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard, as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted at least at last that Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But, oh, look at them, the boys on their bicycles. Look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard, all of dither. You'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, this is no place for babies. With all those hard things rushing around about, we'll have to look somewhere else. So they flew over Beacon Hill and around the State House, but there was no place there. I'm flying all over the different buildings in Boston. They looked in Louisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mrs. Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. See the bridge? See them getting ready to lay their babies? But of course they could swim. One day they swam over to the park on the riverbank and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts and after that the Mallards called on Michael every day. See Michael, the nice police officer? After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. See her counting all of her babies? One day, the ducklings hatched out 
First came Jack, then Cac, then Lac, then Mac, and Knack, and Whack, and Pack, and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings. It kept them very busy. See all the little babies? One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he cracked over his shoulders. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. Oh, there was Mr. Mallard. And there's Mrs. Mallard with all the babies. She taught them how to swim and dive. She taught them to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. <clears throat> when at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you can wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack fell into line, just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. See them swimming across the river? There they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to the highway. See them walking across? Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 went Jack, cack, lack, mac, knack, whack, pack, and quack. Just as loud as their little, he uh, their little quackers could quack. They kept, the cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on. Quack, 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 quacking. See the cars all honking at the ducklings? And the ducklings all going quack, 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 quack. They made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. There's Michael, the policeman. See him, the nice police officer, running to help? He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop traffic, and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do, for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. See the car stopped and the policeman is letting the ducklings all cross the street. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. He had to go back to work. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, family of ducks? What? Ducks? yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick. This is an old telephone booth. Before they had cell phones, you had to go to a telephone booth to make a phone call. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. See them all marching? Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, is it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, well now, ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. Mommy is so proud of her babies. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was a police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. They had traffic stopped all over the place so the duckies could cross the road. Right on to the public garden. Here they go. 
If you visit the public garden with your families now, you'll see statues of the little duckies in the public garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. The policeman smiled and waved goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across to the little island where there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. This is a little island. Mr. Mallard's there waiting for Mrs. Mallard and all her babies. The ducklings liked this new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long, they followed the swan boats and eat peanuts. We'll have to ask Nora about when she went into the Boston Garden and she got to ride the swan boats this summer. When the night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. See the little duckies climbing up to the island? That's the end of the book, Make Way for Ducklings. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did, and you definitely need to visit with your family sometime soon. You can ask Nora all about her adventures with all the ducklings in the Boston Garden. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.